Good day, everyone. My name is Troy De Los Santos, and I am here with my group mates from Biology 102XY to present to you a parade of taxa belonging under the phylum Haptophyta. Allow me to describe the first family under the phylum, which is family Pavlovaceae. This algal family consists of microscopic motile cells which inhabit littoral brackish water and sometimes freshwater environments. The cells are pigmented by chlorophylls A and C, focoxantin, beta-carotene, etc. The cells lack in organic body scales but possess two unequal flagella with the longer possessing small knob scales and fine hairs while the shorter sometimes vestigial. The presence of knob skills is actually the defining characteristic of their class, class Pavlovophyceae. Finally, from their phylum, the haptonema is present, functioning for either attachment, feeding, or motility. The representative species of this family can be the following two organisms. Organisms in family Pavlovaceae, such as these two, are often used in aquacultures to be fed to bivalves, crustaceans, and fish due to their abundant production of polyunsaturated fatty acids, EPA and DHA. We now move on to calcifying protists with the next family, family Calcidisaceae under class Primnitiophyceae. Organisms here are microscopic and motile holococcolith bearing in their haploid stage, while in the dominant diploid stage, they are non-motile coccolith bearing. They inhabit marine waters in both life stages. The family has a unique name composed of the words calci and discus, which mean chalk and disc respectively, referring to its distinct morphology. The morphology consists of tightly interlocked circular placoliths giving rise to its whole coccolith structure with an upper and lower shield connected by a tube. Representative species of this family are the following three organisms. Vargas et al. in, 20, in 2007 stated that coccolithophore bearing organisms are estimated to be responsible for about half of all modern precipitation of calcium carbonate in the oceans. Due to this, their biomineralization plays a major role in controlling the alkalinity and carbonate chemistry of the photic zone of world oceans. Next is family Coccolithaceae. These are marine calcifying protists that also exhibit a biphasic life cycle that is characterized by a motile holococcolith bearing haploid stage in the dominant non-motile diploid stage. In adult stages, the coccolith is composed of placoliths with the R unit extending from the proximal shield to form the upper or inner tube cycle. Many organisms are characterized by the elliptical coccolith structure. Representative species of the family are the following three organisms. As coccolithophores, coccolithaceae also produce calcium carbonate in the oceans, promoting the same effects of changing alkalinity and carbonate chemistry of the oceans. And additionally, coccolithophores contribute to the availability of carbon dioxide and particulate organic carbon for the upper ocean and atmosphere. We now move on to family Hymenomonadaceae which are also microscopic calcifying protists that inhabit marine waters, specifically the littoral zone, while some in fresh waters. They also exhibit a biphasic life cycle with the haploid stage confined in benthic and filamentous forms, transforming into a motile diploid with visible haptonema. Haploid cells are non-calcifying that develop into scaled and calcified diploids. Organisms here are characterized by a well-developed coccosphere constructed by many individual goblet-shaped coccoliths. Overall, Diner et al. and De Vargas et al. state that the evolutionary and ecological success of coccolithophores in the last 220 million years have literally transformed the fate of inorganic and organic carbon in the Earth system, leading to a global decrease in the saturation state of seawater with respect to carbonate minerals, ocean acidification, and participating in the long-term increase of atmospheric carbon dioxide and oxygen.
Another family is the Pleurocrisidaceae, whose species are Pleurocrisis sudoroscofensis and Pleurocrisis flacolithoides. These are marine organisms which are motile and spherical in shape. They measure 13 to 15 micrometers in diameter, have two anisocont flagella, and have a short and bulbous haptonema. In terms of their economic impact, the Pleurocrisidaceae lean more towards the negative effect. This is because they are found to be toxic to Artemia species or what are commonly known as brine shrimp. These shrimps are used as feed in aquacultures and are possible alternative toxicity test subjects for animals. The loss of these shrimps caused by Pleurocrisidaceae species can negatively affect aquaculturing and the lack of available test subjects or indicators of pollution and toxicity in the environment. Moving on to family Isochrysidaceae, they are marine, motile, spherical to ovate, and are unicellular. They have two unequal flagella with no mastigenemes and have a vestigial haptonema which is short and bulbous. A representative of this family is Chrysotilla carteri. Chrysotilla carteri was found to be a possible source candidate for biogas and bio-oil due to their high lipid content of 33%. Moreover, they are also utilized as calcium and B12 vitamin supplements in Japan. Next, we have the family Noeller habdaceae. They are marine organisms and a very popular representative of this family is Emiliana huxleyi, which is the most abundant coccolithophore in the ocean. They are non-motile, unicellular, and are surface dwelling. They have 10 to 15 coccoliths per layer, and this can stack up to an extra three layers. And they also have a vestigial haptonema. Due to Emiliano Huxley being surface dwellers, they can help mitigate light stress and UV radiation due to their high tolerance to stress. Being able to mitigate such factors can help other aquatic organisms which are sensitive to light thrive and persist in the ocean. Moreover, the death of these species causes them to sink and compact as chalk on the sea floor. Over time, with the help of geological processes, they result in structures which can be considered as tourist spots. An example of this is the White Cliffs of Dover or the Chalk Cliffs of Rugen. We also have the family Phaeocystaceae. They are marine organisms that can be unicellular or colonial and are spherical in shape. On the one hand, during their motile stage, the cells are 5 micrometers long, have a short haptonema, two flagella, and have two yellow-brown chloroplasts. On the other hand, during their non-motile stage, their cell length is about 7 micrometers in their colonial form and have a colony size of 2 to 8 millimeters. Their haptonema and flagella are now absent, but they still have two yellow-brown chloroplasts. Phaeocystase is more known for creating algal blooms. For example, Phaeocystis pauchetti creates blooms in high boreal and arctic waters, while Phaeocystis globosa causes blooms in cold and temperate waters. The next family that will be discussed is the family Primnesiaceae. They are found in marine, fresh, and brackish environments. They are saddle-shaped and have two equal flagella and a haptonema that can either be short or long. An organism under this family is the Primnesium parvum, which has the common name golden algae. It lives in marine, fresh water, and brackish environments. It is a planktonic, single-celled, ellipsoid-shaped eukaryote. It forms algal blooms and produces allelopathic chemicals and toxins which can cause death of zooplankton, other algae, and cause fish kills which have a negative impact on the fish population in the environment. The next family is the family Calciosolinaceae, which are found in marine environments. They are cylindrical or fusiform cells with scapoliths covering its entire coccosphere without gap or overlap. They may have needle-like spines at one or both ends and are often baryomorphic. Calciosolenia brasiliensis is a species under the family Calciosolinaceae and is found in marine environments. It has a very morphic coccosphere and its ends are tampered with elongated liths without spines. It is used as a biomarker for age determination. The family Rhabdosferaceae are also found in marine environments. 
Their coccoliths are convex disc shape with or without central process and are usually composed of rim, radial cycle, and laminar cycle. They are often polymorphic and or viromorphic. Algirosphera robusta is a species under this family. It has a spherical coccospheres with prominent flagellar opening and elongated coccoliths. It is used as an indicator of relatively cold and eutrophic environments. Family Cyracospheraceae are found in marine and brackish environments. Their coccospheres are typically elaborate, usually shows dithecatism and or modified polar coccoliths. The muroliths have a well-developed central area lath cycle and variable inner central area. Under this family is the Cyracosphera azoria planeta, which was recently discovered last 2018. It lives in a marine environment. Its coccosphere appears ovoid and is covered by irregularly elliptical body coccoliths. It is a source of food of marine organisms and is used to study the impact of climate change in marine ecosystems. Alisferaceae family Alisferaceae is a type of marine unicellular coccolithophore that is motile. By the way, coccolithophores are phytoplankton that has specialized calcium carbonate plates, or in Neyman's term, scales. In each individual scale is called a coccoli. It bears a radial array of complex crystal units called heterococcolids, arranged in meridional rows. Alisferaceae has two life cycles, the heterococcolid and narrowing phase. The difference between the two is that the heterococcolid is diploid while the nanolith is haploid. The figures on the left show the heterococcolid phase while the other shows the nanolith phase. As of now, there's no studies in all Alisferaceae species that, is, that tackles economic importance. Papasferaceae family. Papasferaceae is a minute unicellular marine coccolithophore that's lightly calcified. Size ranges from 4 to 6 micrometers. It is motile with flagella that is prominent and longer than the cell. This haptophyte can only be found from high latitudes, usually the Arctic. Structure has a narrow neuralith rim, or in other words, it has a rim elevated but without a developed shield like structure. These are heterotrophic as it goes through the uptake of dissolved organic compounds. There are also no studies that tackles economic importance in all species of Papalosferaceae. Umbelosferaceae family. Umbelosferaceae is a marine coccolithophore that proliferates in the subtropics, usually in the Atlantic subtropical gyres and western equatorial Pacific Ocean. It thrives with the it thrives with uh, oligotrophic coccolithophore communities, and this haptophyte family has a dimorphic coccosphere. When we say dimorphic coccosphere, it means that there are two different types of coccolithes or scales. The macrococcolith type has a large leaf, while the micrococcolith is smaller with narrow leaf and an elliptical central area. Same as the previous families, there are no studies have been done for its economic importance. The next family on our parade of taxa is the Helicosferaceae. Like most hatophytes, they can be found in marine habitats. Helicosferaceae appears as an ellipsoidal cell that ranges for about 12 to 28 micrometers long with coccolids that are arranged spirally around its coccosphere, forming what we call a helicolith. This family also contains a flagella, as well as a haptonema, and possesses a polymorphic life cycle, meaning it can switch from holococcolith to heterococcolith bearing. Heterococcolids are a classification of coccolids that form a radial array of complex crystal units, while holococcolids are formed with numerous minute euhedral crystallites that are each enclosed by a thin organic envelope. Helicosporaceae consists of only one genus, which is Helicospera. Under this genus is Helicospera carteri, which can be observed in warm, shallow, brackish, and mesotrophic environments. What's amazing about this species is that they are capable of opportunistic behavior in polluted neuritic regions. And because they produce large, heavily calcified heterococcolids, they have the ability to affect carbon fluxes in their habitat. Also in the order Zygodiscalis, 
Photosferasi is a family of haptophytes found in marine environments which possesses subspherical coccosphere, typically without a flagellar opening. However, flagella are sometimes observed. They are mainly heterococcolith bearing, although two extant species were found to have holococcolith bearing faces. Photosferasi consists of two genera, the Photosfera, which is monomorphic, that only exhibits a discolate form, and the Siphosfera, which is dimorphic and exhibits both a discolate and a lepadid form. The latter can be seen in the species Siphosfera abstaini, which is broadly distributed in tropical and subtropical waters. This species is a good illustration of the flexibility of the classification machinery of haptophytes, making it an exceptional base model for the study of coccolithophore physiology. The next family, on the other hand, is in the order Coccosferales. Also found in marine environments, the Calyptosferaceae family have spherical and motile coccospheres with hollow coccoliths that are called as calyptrolites. A haptonema can also be observed along its flagella. Some species under this family have a heterococcolite non-motile phase that may or may not be an alternate stage of another taxa, such as in the case of Calyptrospera oblonga, which is considered as the holococcolite phase of Syracospera pulchra. Another species under this family is the Calyptrospera speroidea. It is one of the species in this family that possess both a motile holococcolite phase and a non-motile heterococcolite phase paving way for it to become an excellent model for studying life cycle transition as an ecological strategy in haptophytes. Barudosferaceae family The family Barudosferaceae are single-celled, coastal phytoplanctonic algae characterized by having calcareous scales with five-fold symmetry called the pentaliths. The pentalith diameter ranges from 2 to 12 micrometers. These pentalites are composed of five truncated golden triangles, as seen in the first figure on the right. Its distribution is restricted in eritic waters, where it is predominantly observed in shelf seas and rare in oceanic occurrences. The spheroid body of the species Barodosfera bigelowi originated from endosymbiosis of the nitrogen-fixing cyanobacterium UCYNA. There are no studies that talks about the economic importance of the Barudosferaceae. However, its phylogeny and ecology are of considerable interest as they have a fossil record back to the early Cretaceous period. Ceratolithaceae family Ceratolithaceae is a marine haptophyte with size ranging from 6 to 10 micrometers. Ceratolites show very consistent morphology in terms of asymmetry and pattern of development of ridges and teeth. Its first occurrence was from the early Pliocene period. Ceratolithus cristatus has an unusual life cycle which includes heterococcolites and nanolites but no holococcolites. The nanolith bearing face is represented by the horseshoe shaped ceratolites which corresponds to the haploid stage. On the other hand, the heterococcolite producing diploid stage is associated with hooped shape, interlocking heterococcolites which are composed of rectangular crystal units. There are no studies in all species under Ceratolitaceae family that talks about its economic importance. The first figure on the right shows Ceratolitus cristatus and the nanolite bearing face. The following figure shows the same species but in the heterococcolite stage. Reticulosferaceae family Reticulosferaceae is a marine protist found in the Caribbean coast of Mexico. It has a life cycle consisting of a benthic and pelagic phase. The benthic phase is the dominating part and is represented by the meroplasmodium. It is composed of spherical cells and are united by a common reticulopodium. These reticulopodial strands function to capture and digest diatoms in a process called reticulopodial digestion. The meroplasmodium grows by binary fission. When there is limited supply of diatoms, individualization takes place where the association of cell bodies with their common pseudopodial network becomes replaced by a multitude of single cells or the transitional cells. During this time, they contain extensions with fine threads which are the remains of the reticulopodial strands. After some time, these transitional cells are transformed into the heliozoan-like cells which represent the pelagic phase. In this form, axopodia or philopodia are present and they float in the seawater. 
Electron microscopical investigations also reveal that the heliozoan-like cells also consist of two heteromorphic flagella, where one induces an eye spot in nearby plastid, which is a characteristic of heterocont algae. The figure on the right shows the species Reticulosfera socialis, particularly its spherical cells and the cords of reticulopodium. Currently, there are no studies in all Reticulosferaceae species that talks about its economic importance.